Every few years, those people in the culture, and it's not always the same people, it kind of shifts and moves around, and it's new generation, there's a new generation of people constantly, who actually believe uh, that, that uh, in the evil of capitalism, who hate capitalism, despise capitalism, who despise and hate individualism, who can only think in terms of collectivism. And, you know, it seems like every few years, every few decades, every generation, they come up with a new idea on how to make it right, how to, how to, how to do it, how to get rid of capitalism, how to provide a, a, a real viable alternative this time. We've got it. And, and the, the goals seemingly change. Their ideas seemingly change. The name they call their ideology is constantly changing. But the one thing that is always there is really a nihilistic hatred of individualism of individuals making choices for themselves and of individuals succeeding in the world around them. The degrowth movement is just the latest variation of a pattern that really, to some extent, goes back hundreds, thousands of years, uh, but, you know, has been quite prevalent uh, in... Um, in, in, in the West uh, since the birth of capitalism, since the beginning of the 19th century. It, it's interesting. I was listening to a, um, an interview with Ayn Rand uh, about the anti-capitalist mentality. Of course, uh, von Mises had a book, I think, titled The Anti-Capitalist Mentality. Anyway, there was a, um, a, uh, a Q&A about the anti-capitalist mentality. I mean, what motivates people to be anti-capitalist? What is it about capitalism that they hate so much? And, and she made the following observation, which I think is consistent with what I've said when asked about this in the Q&As in the past, but it's, uh, it's interesting the way Ayn Rand always formulates these things. Fundamentally, psychologically, what the anti-capitalists fear more than anything else is independence. And what is meant by independence is what they really fear more than anything else is that they will have to rely on their own rational mind. Deep down, what they are really rejecting what they really reject at the deepest level, what they really reject is reason. It's rationality. It's relying on their own mind. And at the end of that is they're rejecting reality. I mean, to a large extent, they're replacing reality with their own whims, with their own desires, with their own wishes. They're substituting reason with emotion. And they're rejecting the primacy of existence and embracing a primacy of consciousness. If they wish hard enough, if they want it hard enough, if they, then whatever they wish they desire will happen. If they pray hard enough, I mean, think about, think about all the praying that's done. Isn't that a great example? of exactly the same thing. A primacy of consciousness. There's a consciousness, your consciousness, a global consciousness, a communal consciousness, a God consciousness, a nature consciousness, mother with, I don't know, whatever it is. If you just pray, wish, beg, desire hard enough, then that consciousness would make it real. Reality doesn't matter. Reality is malleable. You just have to wish hard. So they want to escape from reality. They want to escape from reason. They want to escape from thought. They want to escape from effort. What they really just want is the desires 
to somehow be fulfilled and to somehow triumph over reality, and that way that'll uh, basically confirm for them that their desires are superior to reality and therefore legitimize those desires. I mean, this is over and over and over again. We see this. People don't want to think for themselves. They don't want the virtue of independence, maybe the virtue of independence of all the virtues is the hardest for people. We are so taught, trained, conditioned to rely on others, to, um, to basically follow orders, commandments, to be told what to do. And they're terrified of living by their own judgment, their own mind, their own thoughts, their own reason, and to be constrained, not exactly the right word here, by reality. God, that's frustrating. It ha A has to be A. I don't want it to be A. I want it to be B. I want it to be non-A. Just for today, please, right now. Can't get away with it. And, and I'd say, particularly today, well, not with just particularly today, but today, in its secular form, this mentality is really how our kids are raised in school. To feel, to emote, to share their feelings, to participate, to engage with other people, to share, to th consider other people's emotions, to everything, everything, it really geared towards this idea of the primacy of emotion, the primacy of whim, the primacy, the, the subjective nature of their beliefs, the primacy of their own consciousness. And they're not taught to reason, to think, to, to, to facts, 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 reality. Now, of course, altruism plays a huge role here as well. Altruism is an ideal moral system for non-independent people. It places the entire focal, uh, focus on others. You are not important. You are insignificant. That gives you, in a sense, moral justification for not being independent. Who am I? Who am I to think for myself? And by the way, it, it, the modern version is this emotion through our educational system, but think about religion is exactly the same thing. Religion is emoting for God. It's all about faith. It's all about rejection of your own reason, your own independence. And it's about following commandments. It's about praying. It's about wishing. It's about desiring. It's not about reason ever. They can pretend, but it's not about reason. So, uh, 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 altruism, both for the Christian and for the secularist, altruism is perfect because altruism says, who the hell are you to think for yourself? You are not the focal of attention. You are not what's morally important. They are, or it is. And indeed, if you're a Christian, you are sinful from birth. You are nothing. And therefore, how can you be independent? How can you be independent? Independence is, is impossible really to an altruist. It's impossible really to an altruist. The whole focal, focus of attention, the whole focal point, the whole orientation, it's towards other, it's otherism. Altruism, otherism. What do they want? What do they think? What do they need? And me? Reality? I, I, just who cares? All, I just need a sacrifice for them. So you immediately see altruism and a, a, a lack of independence as going together. And of course, we know that altruism clashes with capitalism. So, uh, and capitalism requires independence, it requires rational thinking, 
and it's non-altruistic. We can debate what it is, but it's certainly not altruistic. They have to hate capitalism. They have to despise it. And then it's just a matter of, in various forms, in various eras, in various places, they find the right excuse, they find the right system, they find the right, uh, uh, you know, theory to justify their hatred or to justify why we should move away from capitalism, why we must end capitalism. And a deep growth agenda, which is an agenda today of much of, I'd say, the left, uh, much of the radical left, but, but not radical left necessarily in a woke sense, uh, but the radical left in a political sense, the radical left in Europe, the radical left in the World Economic Forum, the radical left across the board. But, but I, I put aside woke for a second because I, I, don't, I, I think woke will support this, but this is much more international. Woke is very much American. It's got big European influences, and it's influenced Europe significantly. But it's very American, whereas this is global. So what is the reasoning behind degrowth? And, and, and no mistake about it, the primary focus of degrowth is the destruction of capitalism, the destruction of freedom, and I would argue really deep down the destruction of individualism, the destruction of reason. Right? The destruction of the ability of individuals to use their mind to pursue their values and, and, and really a negation of the idea, a negation of the idea that your values really matter at all. They don't. I don't care. Your values don't matter. That's super egoistic. That's super individualistic. That's super, you know, selfish. The real question is, I don't know, humanity, Mother Earth, species, the planet, the globe, the world. And one of the things, uh, the degrowth movement, just like many in the environmentalist movement do, is that they realize that they're at a the disadvantage because of the anti-reason uh, perspective mentality. So they kind of embrace pseudoscience or they pretend to embrace science they pretend that what drives them is scientific whether it's scientific with regard to we'll talk about it in a minute climate change or whether it's scientific with regard to their view of economics they hide behind science to pretend that what they're offering is somehow consistent with reality and consistent with science, and indeed, when you tell them they're wrong, they will call you anti-reason, anti-reality, anti-science. 